Hello and welcome to the first video in a 10 part video tutorial series on creating an e-commerce site using Drupal and Ubercart. I am Peter Yaworski, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal, um, and it's my pleasure to bring this video tutorial series to you in collaboration with the Ubercart guys. Uh, Ubercart.org uh, went ahead and contacted me a little while ago and they said, you know, Pete, um, we saw your video tutorials on Ubercart and we thought it'd be pretty cool to create a full video tutorial series from start to finish for new Drupal users on how to create an e-commerce site using Drupal and Ubercart. Uh, there's not really a one-stop solution out there, uh, at no charge for users to learn Drupal and Ubercart to put together an e-commerce platform, so we thought we'd go ahead and we'd develop that. Uh, so these 10 videos are going to take you from start to finish as if you knew nothing about Drupal uh, and they're going to walk you through and show you how to set everything up from you know getting your URL, installing Drupal, all the way to, to your first order. Uh, so in order to do that, let's get started. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Drupal, uh, one of the things I like to tell uh, new clients who are looking for a website, uh, and I'm referring Drupal to them, uh, is to think of it kind of like Windows or a, or a computer operating system, you know, like Leopard for uh, for Mac, if that is the current operating system. Sorry, I'm a Windows guy. Um, but what it is is essentially uh, think of Windows like your operating system. Think of Drupal like your operating system for your website. Uh, you install Drupal; it's kind of like your core. Uh, you get some functionality out of that, but on top of that you can install different modules, so kind of like different programs to do different things for your website. So Ubercard is kind of like a program for Drupal. Uh, it's a separate module, you'll hear that a lot, modules, themes, uh, nodes, a whole bunch of terminology I'll introduce you to. But you install modules on top of Drupal and you get different functionality. So Ubercart is a module, different functionality, allows you to do some e-commerce on your site, so accept payments, sell products, whatnot. So, so that's what this is all about. Um, so. We're at Drupal.org here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to Download and Extend. And, oops, sorry. We're going to get started. We're going to download Drupal 7.14. So while we're here, just before we do, we're going to check out the system requirements. You're going to be download, you're going to be installing Drupal to your web server. So you have to make sure that you have a few things. First is a web server with Apache, right? Or you could use Microsoft IIS. Um, you'll also want to make sure uh, that you have MySQL or uh, a different database software on top of uh, on top of your server that you're using. Lastly, because we're going to be using Drupal, dot, uh, Drupal 7, you want to make sure that you have PHP 5.25 or higher. 5.3 is recommended. So these are all things that you can find on your host. If you're using something like HostGator, which is what I use, uh, GoDaddy is another. I'm, not a big supporter, not going to say one way or another, but if you use GoDaddy, just check to make sure that they offer these. GoDaddy definitely does. Uh, and just make sure that they're all available to you. Uh, so that's that's that. Make sure uh, check those out. So once we have that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to download 7.14. The difference between 7.14 and 6.26, Drupal has major releases. So Drupal 6 is a major release, Drupal 7 is a major release, and then within that, Drupal is constantly releasing patches or upgrades. So Drupal 7.1 was our first release, then 7.2, 7.3, and those um, sub-releases, so 7.1, 7.2, um, they will be different functionality that are released, uh, security updates, uh, so sometimes you know there will be a bug, people identify that when they install different modules, uh, they report that back to the community, and then a, a different uh, release is, uh, is posted so that you can download that and upgrade your version of Drupal. So uh, we're using 7 because that's the most uh, recent major release for Drupal. Uh, next is obviously going to be Drupal 8 and then Drupal uh, 6 will typically become obsolete just like 4 or 5 have become obsolete. Um, so not to worry, uh, you know, some people usually ask me, you know, is Drupal 8 ready to go? Should I be using that instead of 7? Um, use 7, it's the most stable release. Uh, and then when there's another major release, you'll typically get an upgrade path. So there, there's lots of documentation on how to upgrade your site. Um, so that, that happens down the line, not to worry about something right now. So we're going to go ahead, download the, uh, the tar file. And I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now. I already have it there, so we'll go ahead and we'll just hit save. So now I've got that. Now that we've downloaded Drupal, next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that our web server is set up properly to support our install. So uh, if you've got your URL from the same site that you're going to be doing your hosting on, typically that host will set up your URL so that your what are called domain servers are all set up, so you have nothing to worry about there. If you bought your URL from, from another site and then you're bringing it over to your web host, you just got to make sure that your DNS is set up properly. So I'll show you just quickly here. If I were to do that, I would go to add a domain and I would have my domain name here, 
right? And I would keep the master DNS zone on this server, right? You don't really have to change any of this. You just want to make sure that you document root. Typically, what you would do is just have that at slash, right? So that's your, your main. But you'd also have to make sure whoever you went and bought the domain server from, you have to go in there and tell them that your DNS has changed. So you have to get your DNS from your server that's actually going to have your website and then enter that in where your, your website's hosted. That's only if you've purchased the two separately. If you purchase them together, the, uh, your web server will typically set that all up for you. So just a side note there. But what I'm going to do is I have torontowebsitedeveloper.com already registered, already have my site there. So I'm going to create a subdomain and I'm going to work off that for this tutorial series. So what this is going to be is going to be uc.torontowebsitedeveloper.com and I'm going to actually install this at UC Tutorial. Right? So that's where my actual web, uh, my, my Drupal install is going to be at UC Tutorial rather than the actual web host. And that's going to keep it separate from my actual torontowebsitedeveloper.com installation. So I'm going to go ahead and go OK. And I've got my subdomain created. Next thing you have to do, uh, we kind of mentioned it when we were looking at the system requirements, but Drupal's based on a uh, database system and PHP scripting. So I have to create a database, and then when I install Drupal, tell Drupal all the, uh, the credentials for that. So let's go ahead, and you would do the same thing. It might not be the exact same setup, but you go to your database tab, and you're going to add a database. So my database is going to be UC Tutorial. And you're going, to write a, write, you're going to want to write all of this down because we're going to use it when we install Drupal. So hit OK. And now I'm going to add a database user. So this is going to be UC tutorial, just a UC tutorial. And I'm going to enter my password. And again, write all that down because you're going to use it later. And my database username is invalid. So that's a bit of a pain. So let's go back. Let's just go UC. And there we go. My database user was created, so we're good to go. Now what we're going to do is we've got Drupal 7.14 on our desktop as a as a tar file, so we're going to unzip that. So I'll just briefly show you here. So I would just go extract, extract it to my desktop. I've already done that, so no need to show you that. Um, but then I'm going to connect uh, via FTP to my actual web server. So if you're not sure how to do that, uh, have your FTP access tab, and so when I click on that you'll see you're going to have to create a user. So uh, I'm just going to use my existing users, but uh, you would just create an additional FPT account, enter in the name, where your home directory is going to be. So I could create a, an account just specifically for my UC tutorial and I would uh, point that to you know UC tutorial or whatever it was that I set it up. Um, and then I would create an FTP uh, password. So again, if you haven't done that, go ahead and do that now. Uh, but I've already got that set up. So once I have that, I'm going to open up an FTP client. Uh, so I'm using Qt FTP. This will allow me to connect to my, uh, my server. So I'm going to go ahead, Toronto Website Developer. And now you'll see this is my actual web server. So you see tutorial is what we created. So I go ahead and I go there. And you see there are already some files there. So what this looks like is I'm going to actually leave plus because I don't need it anymore. But if I go to uc.torontowebsitedeveloper.com, and we'll get rid of Drupal core here. You'll see that I actually have a web page here. This is what's created by default when I created my subdomain. So I'm going to actually get rid of all this because I don't need it. Drupal uh, is going to be a fresh install. So once I do that, if I reload my page, I'm going to get this Apache test page. It's going to tell me that my web server is configured properly, but I don't actually have anything there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we're in Drupal 7.14. So uh, I'll just walk you through that just to make sure you're in the same place as I am. Here's what I extracted. It actually has another file that's Drupal 7.14. And I'm going to go ahead and install all of this. Now if you're installing Drupal and you happen to come along later uh, and you're installing 7.15, 7.17, exact same setup, doesn't really matter, don't worry about it. Uh, you're going to follow the same steps that I am here. So we'll catch back up once all of this is installed. No point in you seeing uh, Qt FTP go through everything.
Okay, great. So with that installed, what we actually did was we installed Drupal Core. So you'll often, uh, if you're looking in the forums or you know you're you're posting questions, that kind of thing, you're talking to people, uh, you'll often hear about Drupal Core, and that's what we've just installed. These are all the main files that comprise Drupal, and with that, Drupal will install on your server as uh, its core functionality. Uh, you'll often hear the mantra "Don't hack Core." So what that means is don't change any of these files. Uh, so beyond the sites folder, we don't want to actually manipulate anything or play with anything in these files uh, because what will happen is when we upgrade Drupal, so 7.15 came out, it was a security patch, we want to update to 7.15. If we changed any of these files, we'll overwrite those and we'll end up messing up our site. Good way to take your site down. The sites folder is typically the only place that you will do any changes, uh, any manipulations. So, now that we have core installed, let's go ahead and we'll actually install Drupal on our website. So, I'm going to get rid of this website uh, web page and we'll go back to uctorontowebsitedeveloper.com and you'll see now we're getting this installation page. And so, what we did was we installed all the files, but those files will actually make changes to the database and that's where all of our information is stored. So, during this install script, we're going to create all of our database tables. Uh, and actually set up Drupal so that next time we come to the site we'll actually have a Drupal site not this installation profile so let's go ahead and save and continue now if you wanted to you could do your site as multilingual uh, we're not it's just going to be English uh, unfortunately that's beyond the scope of this tutorial but uh, there is lots of information out there on how to do that so again we'll save and continue and now, remember we looked at the requirements. I know that HostGator's provided me with a MySQL database, but you're going to want to make sure that uh, what type of database you have and choose the appropriate one here. Now, my database name, uh, remember we wrote that down. So if I go to type this in, I'm going to get, it was actually UC tutorial, not Ubercart. And then my user is Tehran UC user. I think that's the right password, so we'll save and continue. Fingers crossed. And we're good. So now Drupal's going to actually be installing. So if we were looking at our database right now, we'd see, if we kept refreshing, we see all these tables and everything showing up um, and all of the functionality coming in. So one last step to configuring, uh, and that's just kind of filling out some basic skeleton information. So my site name is going to be my Ubercart tutorial series. I'll use my website, email address, stick with my Drupal username, and just a simple password, my default country, I'm in Canada, obviously choose your own, uh, time zone's good. And now this update notification, again, if there are changes that are coming up to Drupal, uh, especially your modules, Drupal core, that kind of thing, your site can automatically check for those, let you know, and you can receive email notifications if those updates are out there. So always a good thing to do. If you don't want to do it for whatever reason, take them off, but I would recommend them. So we'll go ahead and save and continue. We're going to visit our new site. And boom, check it out. We've got Drupal on our site here. This is the typical uh, installation. Nothing fancy, just right out of the box. This is your Drupal site. Uh, so that's it for this first uh, tutorial in the series. Uh, we installed Drupal, you know, we got our URL, we checked out the back end, created our database, database user, downloaded Drupal, uploaded those files via FTP, and once we installed it, we got to our skeleton site. In the next video tutorial, what we're going to do is actually look at some of the modules we should be downloading. So Ubercart, we're going to look at views, um, what are a couple other ones, uh, administration menu, that kind of thing. We're going to install them, configure them, uh, and then we'll take it from there. So. Uh, I hope this video tutorial helped, uh, and we'll see you at the next one. If you have any comments, please post them. If you're viewing this at ubercart.org or torontowebsitedeveloper.com, uh, always helpful um, to post those questions so that others can see them. I try to stay on top of them at Toronto Website Developer, and the Ubercart guys are all about helping people, so they'll definitely be on top of your questions. Uh, YouTube's a little bit more of a challenge for me, so I'm, I'm not as diligent as I should be, uh, but if you do have a burning question, visit my website or visit ubercart.org. We'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thanks for watching.